Welcome to the 2017 McDonald's and Monroe Speyside Stages, the third round of the ARR Crabe Scottish Rally Championship. We're standing here at the Cooper Park, the first two stages of the rally in quite cold wintry conditions. Thankfully it's quite dry just now and we hope that continues. You can see the cars lining up behind me just now all ready to get started. We wish them luck and hope they have a good day. After that great intro from Susan, there's not a lot I can tell you, except that just over 100 crews lined up to take the start, headed up by snowman winner David Bogey. Yeah, I love it here. Got really good memories from competing here in the past, so I think nine years of doing this rally and 18 times around Cooper Park, I've never been fastest, so it's not about being quickest in here, it's about being quickest in the woods. Chasing him down, Ewan Thorburn and Jock Armstrong are separated by one point at the head of the series, with the Impreza just ahead of the Fiesta. So yeah, confidence has grown in the car, we're uh, I like the stages up here, so we're looking for a good result. I know, we're always aiming for the top podium anyway, so we'll see how we go, but I'm sure David and Ewan, Daisy Henry, oh my god, they're all here, so I saw them now, I never looked at the entry before that, so, so I see it all now, but no we, Well you better not spin up at this hairpin. Oh. <laughs> also in the mix, there are a pair of Irish visitors both capable of upsetting the Scottish crews, not in terms of the championship, but nobody likes to get beaten the whole country. As Susan said, Cooper Park opens the day, and it may not seem like much, but remember, it decided last year's rally. In third, leaving the park, David Bogey quickly jumped to the top of the timesheet through the first forest stage. However, the second one... Oh. 40. Yep. Two right and three right in. Turn tightened, square right. Got puncture, yeah. C1. This cost the Fabia four seconds, relegating it to second overall at first service. How far in was that, David? Ah, my limb. There's no spinning in Cooper Park this year for Jock. In fact, he left the park in the lead of the rally, and despite losing three to bogey in here, he was in the right place to strike after the puncture, to lead at first service. It's a reserved run through the park for Thorburn in an early sixth. Once onto the gravel, it appeared that not all was well. 100. Long crest, 100. Six left in over crest. Something wrong, like. See, 350 over crest, I'm feeling it. No, I think we've got a problem on the back. There's something, something loose and something rubbing on the car, and it's really loose at the back. It feels like it's all over the place. Then came the first of our Irish visitors, Desi Henry, and another Fabia. He's an early third. This is fellow Irishman Mark Donnelly in a Fiesta World Rally car. Well, that's one way to find your limit. He sits fifth at first service. Mike Faulkner is on the ragged edge as usual. As ever, Mike and co-driver Peter are great to watch on both tar and gravel, and they set a solid seventh after four stages. Second after the park, Sean Sinclair is getting some encouragement from co-driver Jamie Edwards. 80. Go now. Black crest, 170. Crest again, 100, keep going. It's all going pretty well inside the S14, but things are about to take a turn. Slow crest, 40 turn hairpin left, just after this, don't cut, don't cut. 100. Oh. I cut. 100, yeah, late. Lucky to get away with just a puncture, the Impreza crew are an early sixth, seven seconds up on Faulkner. 
missing since the snowman Bruce McCombie had expected to be rusty and off the pace in the Speyside and he was anything but two seconds back from Faulkner setting up a battle for evil supremacy and trust me it's a good one And it could even become a three-way fight. Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry sit only four seconds back from McCombie after four stages. Greg McKnight is suffering with the flu. And that spin won't have helped the temperature in his head. The young charger taking a steady approach over the opening loop to lie 11 seconds back from McCulloch. And now we have the Buckley R5s. Donnie McDonald and Andrew Faulkner sit only three seconds behind the Yellow Evo after four, and seven seconds up on R5 newcomer Dale Robertson, who three-wheeled his way through the park in some style. Once onto the loose, the former Evo pilot found that his normal braking points no longer apply. This combined with a stall sees him 12th at first service. The next three stages belong to Bogey, fastest on every one. That four second deficit is now a 24 second lead. Losing those four seconds to the Fabio on SS5, Armstrong and Swinsco were still running well, although now 24 seconds back in second. 70. Left four in. 50 up. Handling issues sorted, Thorburn and Beaton used these three stages to close the gap on the Impreza from 14 seconds down to nine with three stages left. Big championship implications in that battle. Six left in. 200 up, here small crest, 3 left plus in, 50, keep right over crest, 40, tight 4 left, no cut over crest. Separated by 4 seconds, the next two places were held by our Irish visitors Desi Henry was in front, despite an engine fire, and Donnelly was having gearbox issues. Irish pride definitely at stake. Do you remember that Evo 9 battle? Well, how good is this? Equal times in all three stages has left Faulkner and Foy and McCombie and Coots still only two seconds apart. Talk about competition. Very long, five right plus. Oh, baby. Five right plus. Sean Sinclair has a problem. 60. I don't know what's this thing doesn't feel right. Turn, hairpin right, hairpin right here. Hairpin right. It's a bit soft, new side maybe. Yeah, six left. From 25 seconds off the lead to 1 minute and 17, the handling issues have taken their toll on Sinclair's pace. With nothing obviously wrong at service, will this fall continue? <laughs> Feeling a bit better, Greg McKnight has pushed his way past McCulloch on this loop, but only by 6 seconds, setting up EVO 9 battle number 2. Still 11th, Donnie McDonald has still been unable to shake Dale Robertson. The two R5s welded together with only two seconds between them with three stages to go. Very good. Um, that last stage there was very slippy and very muddy so 
as you can see by the state of the car, but not nah, good. You know, we're just doing our own thing and feeling really comfortable. So Andrew's doing a good job in the car and tires are working well. So yeah, no complaints. But it's nice. Uh, it's still it, you can get carried away. I do. I get carried away so easily. <laughs> <laughs> just got to calm down again. But no, it's even getting the traction out the corners is good. So we'll we'll try and do something about that now. Yeah, obviously I had the problem this morning with the rose joint and the uh, second loop was a lot better. It was quite slippy through that last stage and clashing down in front of the trees. It was really quite muddy, so yeah, we're getting round. That's been a very interesting second look for you. Yeah, it's uh, driving really fast and really a good battle with Bruce. So three stage times on the trot, exactly the same. So uh, he's uh, he's not letting go, so uh, we'll have to keep going. <laughs> oh, I think it's pretty close, is it? <laughs> Identical times in the three stages. Oh, I can't believe that. Eh? Yeah, it is. So it means you're still two seconds behind them going into this last three. Uh, yeah, bloody Cooper Park's not good in for me, is it? I don't know, did you do something in there or were you just slow? No, I just didn't like it. I'm just <laughs> slow. Well, we'll keep on going. Good battle, which is what it's all about. Well, we've... Good to be top of Evo, but Mike's a cracking driver. Taking third in the Challengers and their best overall result this year so far, Simon Hay and Callum Jaffrey move into second driver and first co-driver in the Challengers points. Leading for most of the day, Michael Binney and Claire Moe were pipped to the Challengers win on the last stage. However, their performance netted Michael the John Horton Star Driver Award. Oh yeah, um, chuffed to bits. Uh, I never thought in my second year of rallying I would be um, awarded with such an like an award like this. So um, I'm really chuffed and very very grateful for it. And uh, thank thank you to everyone who nominated me for it. Fourth early on, John Wink and John Forrest lit the blue touch paper and charged to within eight seconds of the lead after stage eight, three after an eighth fastest time on nine, before grabbing their first one of the season on the last stage of the day. On to the final loop and we lose Dale Robertson. A spin into the undergrowth found something solid, removing most of the front end of the Fiesta. And this promoted Freddie Milne into 10th SRC position at the finish. Disaster for Armstrong and Swinsco and off in SS9, dropping them to 9th SRC crew. Uh, you can see the damage on the front bumper of the Impreza there. Jock doing just enough to still hold second in the championship points. Tenth overall and eighth SRC crew went to Donny McDonald and Andrew Faulkner. A last loop puncture put the dampeners on McCulloch and Hendry's day. Seventh SRC crew home. The season-long brake problems resurfaced for McKnight and Marshall in the final loop. They survived to take 8th overall and 6th in the SRC. In car with Bruce McCombie, remember he's locked in that battle with Mike Faulkner. Oh, he's overshot this junction. Oh, time's going to be ticking away here. He's got to find reverse quickly. Well, that's spoiled that run. Eventually, Bruce and Michael settling for 7th overall and 5th in the SRC. With the S14 now handling better, Sinclair and Edwards tried their hardest to regain some of that lost time. 6th in the event gives Sean 4th in the driver's points, but Jamie snatches a 3rd in the co-driver's placings. Things went pretty well. Um, we started quite brightly, but um, probably... In hindsight, we could have done with having a different tyre choice and that cost us a bit of time in the morning loop. Um, and then on one of the longer stages, we just didn't have a really good feel in the car and just felt like the car was moving around a lot, which knocked the confidence a bit. Checked it all out in service and um, it was okay. But um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good day. Disappointed not to, to get a, a podium for us both, but um, it's been good. 
outperforming their car once again. The run of good form continues this year for Faulkner and Foy. Another podium is a just reward for withstanding the pressure from both McCombie and Sinclair. Mike takes third driver's points with Peter second in the co-drivers. It, does. it uh, feels like a victory to, uh, you know, especially, you know, middle of the day, we'd had a stall uh, at the end of the second forest stage, which cost us eight or ten seconds, which we were kicking ourselves for and thought we'd thrown everything away. And then it was uh, nip and tuck with Sean and, and uh, Bruce all day. Yeah. Car's gone good, you know. We're gradually, Mike started in the car in, and, and really uh, we're starting to get, you know, getting the speed that we hoped for at the start of the year. So, you know, end of round three, and we're uh, we're still on the podium. So yeah, end of a great day. Mark Donnelly ended his Scottish holiday with a solid fourth overall. <laughs> Thorburn and Beaton are still having some nervous moments. Short four left plus in here, open. Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Right over small crest, 80. Here, small crest into hairpin left down here, hairpin left. Just watch it. 200. Fucking hell. <laughs> that was like sheet ice. At least Paul can see the funny side, and to be fair, he's got a lot to be happy about. Third overall gives you in second SRC points and the championship lead. Paul, however, goes one better with maximum co-driver points. He won't be rubbing that one in too much, will he? I'm going to just come to Paul first, not that I want to rub it in, you and but, but Paul, just because of the, the clerks of registration, has been first registered co-driver today, first time in a while. Yep, it's uh, been a long time waiting for that again, but uh, yeah, quite happy, quite happy. It was uh, just registered co-drivers work to my favourite today, so, but I'll take it nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of, bit of an afternoon and uh, we're still not where we want to be, but we're getting closer. Yeah, you had a good push in the afternoon and obviously we're closing in on Jock, uh, who unfortunately then binned it and binned, if you pardon the pun. But uh, nevertheless, you know, the, the pace is there in the afternoon, you just need to try and sort it in the morning. Yeah, that's always been my issue, I think. <laughs> no, there's still more to come. Um, like you say, you just need to get time in the car and a bit more confidence. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time out we can uh, go one better. Spoiling the Scottish party at the top, Desi Henry takes Irish honours with second overall. Small crest into turn square right, no cut. 50. And making it the Fabia show out in front, it was a convincing win for David Bogey and the unregistered Andrew Ruffhead by 39 seconds. All good preparation for the Pirelli rally next weekend. Hey, it's been a good day. Um, obviously, I've got good memories of this event, you know, winning it a few times in the in the past so you know really looking forward to coming up here and the rally really lived up to its expectations stages were good around like clockwork and uh, obviously the result was good so had a really good day so it's two wins for bogey this year but ewan thorburn has been mr consistent up next the scottish rally in may